Hey, what's up guys? The Explanation Pro is here. Today, I'll explain the World War action movie, Fury. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with War Daddy stabbing an enemy soldier who rides a horse across the battlefield in Germany. Then War Daddy gets back on the tank after releasing the horse. Inside it, War Daddy's crews fixes their military tank named Fury. While quarreling about Red's death, Grady keeps on blaming War Daddy while Gordo tries to shut them up. Yet, on the other hand, Bible tells War Daddy that it's the war that kills Red, not him. After a minute, War Daddy patrols the battlefield as his crew drives the military tank to escape. Later, War Daddy and his crew arrive on the military base. As War Daddy talks to their comrades, Gordo and Grady carry Red's corpse out of the tank. While War Daddy watches the medic taking care of the corpse, a sergeant calls him to report his third platoon. War Daddy commands his crew to prepare their green and fix their mechanical issues. Then he hides behind the military vehicle and controls himself from painting as he walks out. Afterwards, Norman calls his name to report as his new assistant driver. Meanwhile, Bible fixes their tank when Norman suddenly appears. Norman introduces himself to War Daddy's crew and asks about the front location, but no one answers him. Bible then inquires more about Norman's background while Grady laughs at his answers. Then Grady orders Norman to clean their tank as he lets him take a look at his seat inside. A while later, Norman pukes outside the tank. Then he watches War Daddy attacks the shoot Staffel while his crew and other soldiers pacify him. Furious, War Daddy instructs Norman to kill every last one of the SS as he can and gives him a rifle. Afterwards, a high-ranking officer tells War Daddy, Sergeant Davis, Binkowski, and Peterson about their flank guard mission in North. They will tie up with Baker Company from the 31st Wild War Daddy serves as their platoon sergeant and after their attack, they will work for Captain Wagner. After their talk, Gordo engines their tank towards North. As they arrive, War Daddy orders his crew to ready their gun. Then he commands Norman to cast an eyeball on the enemy over the radio. If Norman sees anything that makes a move, he must cut them right in half. Afterwards, Gordo teaches Norman how to pull a trigger once the enemy comes out. While they're on the tank, War Daddy talks about Hitler and asks his crew if Jesus loves him. Bible answers no and says that Hitler's far from saving from man's justice. War Daddy then jokes again as his crew laugh. Along their way, Norman sees an SS hiding behind the bush. As he is about to pull the trigger, the SS already throws the grenade at their comrade's tank. Bible shouts ambush as War Daddy shoots the SS, who's running away on the tree line. Then War Daddy jumps off their tank and walks towards the SS corpse who lay on the ground, dead. To his dismay, he reprimands Norman for not killing the SS and blames him for their comrade's death. Upon their arrival at Baker Company, Sergeant Miles escorts War Daddy to Lieutenant. Then War Daddy reports that he only has four tanks instead of ten. Then Lieutenant orders Miles to get the first platoon ready as they will be working for War Daddy now. Afterward, the Lieutenant discusses their mission with War Daddy to save their men. They will remove the anti-tanks of Krauts who covered the field. After their talk, War Daddy instructs the sergeants about the plan. Then the sergeants mount up their squad to get ready for the combat. When they arrive at the field, Gordo orders Norman to close the hatch while the soldiers prepare their gears outside. The lying soldiers stand up and join the walking battalion as the tanks drive across the grassland. Afterwards, the crowds fire them while War Daddy commands Bible to fire them back. War Daddy then continually shouts fire as Kraut's anti-tank activates. While firing, Gordo curses Norman and commands him to shoot the Nazis. Norman trembles loading the gun so Bible does the shot instead. As they get near the tree line, War Daddy radios the sergeants to hold their tank as he had shots the Nazis on the ground. Then he orders Miles to get the other soldiers in the fight. Inside the tank, Norman uses the periscopes to check the Nazis' dead bodies and report it to Gordo. Yet Gordo commands him to hit them again as he tells Norman that he isn't a doctor to know if they're dead or not. Then Gordo speaks again, telling Norman to hit the Nazis so they don't stand up and shoot them. As Norman balls, War Daddy suddenly orders him to turn off the intercom if he continues his drama. War Daddy and his crew win the battle against the Nazis. As War Daddy sits inside the tank, he sees Norman praying. So, he talks to him. War Daddy says that Norman sitting on a seat where the best bow gunner in the entire 9th army occupies it before. So, Norman apologizes and says that he's trying his best to do his job. War Daddy hears Dillard interrogating a crowd wearing a US army coat a while later. As he goes outside to confront the soldiers, he calls Norman. Then War Daddy orders Norman to kill the crowd to prove himself. Yet Norman curses at War Daddy and refuses him. Norman begs to kill himself instead. So War Daddy tells him that if he's not going to kill the crowd, the crowd will kill him. Still, Norman refuses. War Daddy then forces him to kneel, grips his neck, drops the gun on his head, 
and pulls the trigger towards the crowd. Then he kicks Norman afterwards. Bible helps Norman to get up. Norman asks if killing makes a man out of him while whimpering as they walk. But Bible ignores his questions and orders him to sit across Gordo and Grady. Then suddenly, Gordo says that War Daddy is solid even if he might be crazy. Bible agrees with Gordo and Grady begins to talk about their experience with War Daddy. While talking, War Daddy suddenly appears. He tells his crew to get ready as they leave the area, then reminds Norman to eat something. On their way to the northern town, War Daddy radios Wagoner that they're ready to commence the assault. Wagoner copies, then he radios War Daddy to initiate the attack, while they hit them from the south. Afterward, War Daddy radios the sergeant to split up, while Binkowski will follow and stay with War Daddy's crew. While moving, War Daddy asks an older man where are the German soldiers? When suddenly, the sniper shoots him. Miles shouts at War Daddy, fires the building where the sniper hides. As they continue moving, suddenly, gunfire from Kraut occurs, hitting all the American soldiers, including Miles. War Daddy then radios Binowski to bomb the cellar where the Kraut stinger hides. Upon reaching the square, the German signals to blow the anti tank towards War Daddy's tank. After the German attacks, War Daddy radios Bible to fire their location. Then Norman shoots the remaining Germans who are screaming. War Daddy and his troops stop at the square. Then a German appears while waving the white flag to surrender. So, War Daddy tells him to let the Germans come out with their hands up, then shouts at Binkowski to load an HE and get ready in case the Germans want to test them. The Germans follow War Daddy's orders and discharges the German inside the bank. As they get out, War Daddy sees an SS who hangs the kids, so he commands the American soldiers to shoot him. After their mission, Wagoner talks to War Daddy and tells him to rest with his crew as they prepare for tomorrow's war in the morning. Afterwards, War Daddy approaches Norman and compliments him for rubbing out the heinies. Then Norman answers that he likes it. Seconds later, War Daddy tells Norman that he will show something to him. Upon entering, Norman sees the dead bodies of the generals inside the office. He asks War Daddy why he is showing it to him. Then War Daddy answers, Ideals are peaceful, history is violent. Outside the office, War Daddy catches a woman at the window from the building. Then he immediately tells Norman to follow him as they enter the building. When they reach it, he asks the woman who is hiding inside then walks towards the room and finds a girl under the bed. Afterwards, War Daddy orders the woman to prepare some coffee. Then he calls Emma, the woman's cousin, and gives her eggs to cook. While resting, Norman plays the piano, when suddenly Emma approaches him and sings. Then, War Daddy tells Norman to take Emma to the room. Minutes later, Norman sits beside War Daddy on the table when Gordo, Grady, and Bible suddenly enter the room and sit with them. The woman prepares their food afterward. Suddenly, an American soldier calls for War Daddy and announces his new mission from Wagoner. Norman asks Emma for a pen as they leave, but Grady immediately grabs his collar to get out. Later, Wagoner reports a recon plane that spots a German troop concentration moving west in the area, so he commands War Daddy to guard the crossroad. War Daddy asks what troops have. Then Wagoner answers that they have tanks, horses, and, and artillery. Wagoner says that War Daddy is the only one that they have, and that he better secure their area to prevent the German troops from smashing the supply train. While War Daddy and his troops prepare their gear, a sudden airstrikes bomb the square. Afterwards, War Daddy calls his crew to check them while Norman looks for Emma. To his dismay, he finds Emma dead from the explosion. Meanwhile, German tanks fire one of War Daddy's tanks. On their way to the crossroad, War Daddy immediately radios his crew to traverse hard left and calls for a backup. As the blast continues, War Daddy sees that the tiger shoots them. Then he radios Bible to smoke them up. Davis radios War Daddy to get out of the field. But instead of listening, he orders the sergeants to hit the tiger again. As they realize that the tiger is a heavy armored tank, War Daddy radios Gordo to flank left, then Davis to flank right. Unfortunately, Peterson gets shot in the head in his tank. Surprisingly, the tiger victoriously bombs David's tank as well. Yet, War Daddy and his crew continue to fire the tiger's tank. When they finally destroy it, War Daddy shoots the Germans, who quickly get out of the tank, then run, while Norman on the other hand fires the remaining Germans inside the tank. War Daddy's crew breeds out heavily inside the tank, then compliment each other for their excellent job. On the crossroads, a sudden landmine explodes and destroys the wheel of War Daddy's tank. Then War Daddy orders Gordo and Bible to fix it, while Grady and Norman check inside the building. As they enter the building, Grady takes this opportunity to apologize for being harsh to Norman. Fortunately, Norman forgives him and they both get out of the building to report zero contact to War Daddy. Afterwards, he commands Norman to go out to the top of the hill and walk from the trees to the guard. Norman hides inside the bushes and eats his food as he reaches the hill. Then suddenly, he hears the SS battalion marching while singing on the crossroad. Norman quickly runs out and reports it to War Daddy. As Bible tells the crew to move out, 
War Daddy says that he will fight it out and hold the crossroad. Then Grady talks, telling War Daddy that their tank is busted, yet War Daddy mounts them up, ignoring his crew's complaints. Then suddenly, Bible shouts, making them stop talking. He asks War Daddy what he is doing on the tank, but he ignores it and orders them to get out of the crossroad and walk toward the tree line. As War Daddy finishes his preparation, he tells his crew that it's alright and that the war is his home. Surprisingly, Norman joins War Daddy, then Bible, and the rest of the crew as they can't resist War Daddy fighting alone against the SS Battalion. Later, War Daddy and his crew steal the uniform from the dead crowd and change their uniform. Then they carry out Krauts' corpse and put them in their tank. Bible then pours the gas on their dead bodies afterwards. Then War Daddy signals Bible to light up the remaining US uniform. Inside the tank, War Daddy and his crew prepare their gears. While waiting, War Daddy drinks alcohol while Bible preaches to them. Then they all share the alcohol and drink. Norman says that the SS Battalion is coming as the sun comes down, so War Daddy commands his crew to get ready. The SS Battalion then walks towards the tank as the SS officer signals them to open it. As the German opens the hatch, War Daddy pulls the trigger and then throws grenades on them. Bible then pulls the artillery from the tank and fires the SS truck afterwards. At the same time, Norman shoots all the SS Battalion running and fires the building. Grady, on the other hand, loads the ammo as Bible fires, and when the tank runs out of ammo, War Daddy signals them to get out and use the rifles to shoot the SS Battalion. While shooting, Bible quickly gets the last box of bullets outside and immediately gets back inside the tank. As War Daddy closes the hatch, two Germans get near him. Luckily, War Daddy successfully kills them. Then Bible aids War Daddy after he closes the hatch. The Germans fire their tank a while later and unfortunately shoots Grady inside. As Bible mourns, Gordo shouts to continue fighting. Then Norman begins shooting as War Daddy looks out for the SS Battalion using the periscope. Unfortunately, Norman suddenly runs out of ammo, and War Daddy says that it's the last belt they have. Minutes later, the crew gets out of the tank and shoots the SS Battalion using the rifles, while War Daddy uses the turret. As the SS Battalion runs, one throws a grenade into the hatch and kills Gordo, who's covering it to protect Norman and War Daddy. Meanwhile, Bible tries to steal a rifle from the lying German, who suddenly wakes up and punches him. When Bible hits him back, Norman shoots the German and tells Bible to go back inside the tank with him. War Daddy then continues firing the SS Battalion as he commands Bible for a grenade. When Bible comes out of the hatch to give the grenade to War Daddy, the sniper shoots him. War Daddy continues to fire when suddenly a sniper shoots him. The sniper remains, attacking War Daddy as he sees him retreating into fury and closes the hatch. As War Daddy gets inside, he saves his breath, apologizes to Norman, and shares his last words with him. Then he tells Norman the hatch under the tank and commands him to go as the two Germans drop the grenades into the hatch. Right as the Norman escapes, the grenades detonate, killing War Daddy. The movie ends with Norman covering himself using the soil as the German saves his life by not telling the USS officer that there's still an American soldier under the tank. Then the following day, the American troops rescue him as one of the soldiers says he's a hero. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video.